Well, now working on the steering column uh, drive shaft, I'm able to get this out fairly easily with a little bit of persuasion. I basically uh, removed, there's a uh, uh, two half inch bolts down on this lower rag joint. They're shouldered bolts, and one of them is a bigger thread size than the other size, but I was able to remove those relatively easy. Um, and then I removed this universal joint up here, coupling, there's a uh, 11 sixteenths nut on a, on a square head bolt. So I cut that loose, and when I was able to, when I did that, this shaft just pushed up enough to pull it off of the rag joint. Then I took, a, removed this special kind of 12 point um, bolt that's on the rag joint close to the gearbox. I removed that. Had to get a little chisel in there and, and pry that open a little bit. And then once I got that pried open, I was able to slide that off the spline. So we now have uh, the rag joint and the, uh, the drive shaft out of the car. We'll move on to the steering column itself now. Well, now we're working on getting the steering wheel pulled uh, so we can see we can about dropping this column out of the, the cab. Uh, first thing you do is just pull off this little uh, horn button and it just pops right off. There's some little uh, pressure clasps in there that, that release. To get inside there, there's three Phillips head bolts that hold the horn. I guess this would be the horn retainer. Phillips head screws, and that pulls out uh, this little retainer, which has got a, a little uh, uh, springy, uh, it's actually plastic uh, insulator around these bolts. And that's really important because that's what makes the horn work. Um, below that is the horn spring. So this is a, is a convex little flat plate pretty important to make sure that's in there correctly because that's again what pushes the horn button out and then there's a uh, then there's a uh, three-quarter inch nut on the, on the uh, spindle quarter inch nut there's a big washer underneath the nut and now we're to the point that you really got to have a, a uh, steering wheel puller to uh, suck this thing off there's two it's like five sixteenths screw holes in there that'll take a, uh, a big long bolt on the puller so you have to be a little bit careful there's a the horn button pin that actually engages the horn in there. So we're going to put these get these started in here and run them down a little bit just so we got a good hold. I want that to be fairly level so that that. Pulls even. And if we're lucky, this will come right up. Okay, and then 
comes this very special little horn button thing. And uh, looks like that's got a keyway on it. I'm not sure that that has anything to do with the alignment in here other than this pin was on the on the left side and that's the button that goes in to engage the horn and then we got this whole turn signal indicator piece pretty sure these items get worn on occasion screw in there looks like we got to get uh, got to take this turn signal indicator off and it looks like we got to take this hazard uh, flasher button off and then uh, I'm not sure if there's another screw in there or not but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video because I want to take some pictures of this so I know how to get it back in there and uh, and then we'll resume if we need to when we get it Next step. Okay, when the last video left off, I was trying to get this steering column out and uh, uh, started taking apart this uh, turning signal wiring indicator and that was starting to look pretty tricky with a bunch of springs. So I wanted to take some photographs of it and I did that. So then I resumed trying to get uh, the column out and pretty quickly learned it'd be best to just go ahead and take the dash out to be able to access some of the wiring. So to get that dash out is pretty simple. I actually had them out on other trucks. There's uh, one, two, three, there's six little chrome one inch pan head screws that go into the bezel. Two down here, two down here, two down here, uh, and two up here in the center. So I pulled, uh, pulled those screws out. And then at the base of the instrument panel is uh, this little rubber seal and, and uh, I don't know what you call it, holder. Two Phillips screws came out of that. So I pulled that out, and then uh, once you get those screws out, you can kind of work this dash a little bit forward, and behind the dash is the, the uh, speedometer cable, so you've got to reach up behind the dash and unscrew that. Uh, the oil pressure is down here in the lower right. Again, I just pulled it out just gently enough to get a, 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 the, I can't remember what you call it, pipe wrench, special wrench for oil fittings and I uh, just unscrewed that gently so I pulled that off and then you got to pull the the pin out of the headlight switch and to do that you got to reach your arm way up in the top and up in the top of this switch box is a little spring-loaded button and when you push that button down Now I can't even get it out when it's out of the car. Well, I'm not sure why I'm having so much trouble getting it out, but, but there's a little button here and you push that button down and then this, uh, this, uh, I don't know why it's not coming out. There we go. You gotta work it in. There's a little detention notch in there that when you pull it out to that notch, you gotta kind of feel it and then it just pops out. You gotta get that out in order to pull the uh, little trim ring off. Uh, similar for the elect uh, wiper switch, this uh, um, has a little, uh, well actually there's not on that set screw and it just came off. I think there's supposed to be a set screw in there because this looks like it has a little detention thing in there, but this knob may be an aftermarket knob that doesn't have the screw in it, but it just pulled off. You don't actually have to pull the switch out of the dash, but um, I did pull the trim ring off and then I just went in and pulled that switch out. I'll put it with the others. So once you do that, you got to take the uh, electrical conduit out of the back of this instrument panel. There's two clips on the side of it. You squeeze them in and pull it out. And on the back of this is, is the little circuit board. And this little plastic circuit board is pretty delicate. Um, looks like it might have had a problem already because these are black. 
So I suspect that this circuit board is bad. Um, you can put a take a continuity tester and touch. One of these is a ground circuit, and then the rest of these all go to these special deals. So you can take a continuity tester and test all those circuits to see if they're bad. You can do the same thing with the light bulbs to see if the light bulbs are bad. But uh, we'll, we'll rework this, uh, this uh, whole dash plate and uh, we'll set it right up here. We'll do, work this whole dash plate and get a new bezel and get it sorted out. So back to the column then, once I got the dash out, it's pretty easy to disconnect the uh, column harness. Now this was just hanging there, but and there's a little metal plate that goes over this harness that just snaps off here. You can kind of squeeze it in a little bit and snap it off. I'm pretty sure this thing here is supposed to be on this column. It was just hanging up in the dash, but I think it's supposed to be mounted on the column. Down at the base of the column, all the way down here at the firewall was also two more uh, uh, plugs that just pulled off. And um, once I got those off, I of course took the, the clamp off at the firewall on the outside that holds the lower part of the column two bolts holding that, I pulled that clamp off, and then up underneath there is a big uh, panel up underneath the steering column, uh, sits just like this, uh, actually it sits just like this, bolts come from the other side. So um, there's three bolts, I think there's actually supposed to be a fourth one because there's a hole here, but there was no bolt in there. So there's three bolts that hold this plate up. And once you take those three bolts off, there's one more strap that hangs up in the uh, top side that uh, this little holder right here, once I pulled that down, the whole thing just uh, came, came down out of the dash and then I just worked it uh, into the compartment uh, in order to work that column out. Uh, it's pretty clear you would also have to have the steering wheel off, which I did. I don't think you could get this column out with the seat in and the steering wheel on. So with that, we now have the dash out, the steering column out, We'll bag all these uh, switches so we know where they go, and uh, and we'll move on to maybe see if we can't get the rest of the controls out of the dash and get the seat out. Download the RestoRack app today to begin managing, tracking, and documenting your restoration project.